Hey folks, today we're going to update our Mac Pro 5,1 to Monterey 12.7.1. It's just another security update. Apple seems to be releasing these pretty frequently lately. And we'll open our system preferences, software update, and as you can see, Sonoma shows up. You do not want to install Sonoma or Ventura when you're using Martin Lowe's Open Core package. And of course, if you're running OpenCore Legacy Patcher, you can upgrade all the way to Sonoma, but I don't recommend it. You're not going to see any performance increases. In fact, you'll probably see the opposite. And I'll touch more on that at the end of the video, as the Xeon processors are really starting to show their age. So, you see another update is available, more info, but the only update in there is Safari, and that's because we have not updated our config plist and rebooted the computer, so let's do that. So now I'm going to go to Clover Configurator, and you only use this to mount your EFI, you don't muck with it otherwise, but uh, Martin has also now put in a nice little script to mount your EFI in his most recent package. Maybe it was in there in the package before and I just didn't notice it but I only noticed it after I did the update, so I'll stick with Clover for this video. So you type in your password, you mount the EFI that has your OpenCore install on it. I'm sure you're already familiar with this. Then we open our EFI folder, and there's our boot and OpenCore folder, and in the OpenCore folder is the config dot p list and we're going to open that up now i always get this security warning so i have to go to the apple security settings and agree to open the app and the app that i use is bb edit and some reason this new update always wants me to go in there and allow the config p list to be opened so now we have the config p list open and normally you would might have to scroll and scroll and try and find these spots to edit but the easy way to do it is to just set up the two things that you need to search within the config p list and i have this saved in apple notes so i can just copy paste from notes into the search menu in bb edit so see pewid one mask it jumps right to that point and i go in there and i change the a to a C. So you want it to be identical to the line above it. So C Pewid 1 mask, you're changing the A to a C. And now we're going to search the second spot where we need to make an edit, which is update SM BIOS. You can just search update SM BIOS. It brings you right to the spot in the config P list and you can type in false. So you want to set true to false and then you're ready to hit save and then reboot your computer and the new Monterey update will show up. So after editing the config plist, we reboot the computer and now under other update options, we now see the macOS Monterey 12.7.1 update is available and Safari was already available, but now we're seeing the OS update. So we're gonna install that now and it takes a while. It's going to be multiple reboots, but the first reboot, you want to make sure the OpenCore Boot Picker selects the installer, which it seems to automatically do that, but you just want to make sure you're not booting back into your hard drive. You want to boot into the installer. And we'll speed this up. And once it's done downloading, the computer will reboot. And now you're at the OpenCore Boot Picker and you want to select Mac OS Installer, which it automatically does this. You just want to make sure that you don't move it over to Macintosh HD. You don't want to boot into your hard drive. You want to boot into the installer. And the installer will do its thing, installing, and then the computer will reboot again. Now you can see the installer is gone and it's going to boot into Macintosh HD. So it's essentially three reboots for the whole process, and then you'll wind up back at your login screen after the second boot into Macintosh HD. And it'll have to do some optimizing. It's not going to be super perky right away. And our update was successful. We are now running 12.7.1 on the old Mac Pro 5.1. Uh, mine's a 2009. It's got two xeon six core processors so it's a 12 core and uh, 48 gigs of ram and an rx 6800 xt which i have a video on on how to install those in a mac pro 5 one but anyway we are going to move on to one more step that you have to do after doing this install which is to put your config p list back to its original state before we went in and made the two changes so we're going to launch clover and we're going to mount our efi 
EFI that has our OpenCore installation on it. EFI is just a hidden partition on every hard drive. Each hard drive has an EFI. So we're going to mount the EFI and you can see it pops up over there on the right. Going to open the EFI and all we're going to do is replace the config plist that we modded. Instead of going in there and retyping in the information back to the way it was, we're just going to replace it with the one that Martin originally includes with his package. That is, unless you did a bunch of other mods to your config plist, then you might want to go back and just make those two easy changes. For me, I don't do any modifications to my config plist except for when I'm doing these updates. And we're going to just replace the config plist from my downloaded copy of Martin's package to the EFI folder, replacing the one we modded. And now it's back to the way it was before we went in and made the changes. So now we reboot and our computer will be running at top speed again. So here's a recent quote from Martin Lowe that was on Facebook. My OpenCore EFI folder is only a bootloader. For Ventura or Sonoma, you have to patch some system files to bypass the AVX2 requirement. And OpenCore Legacy Patcher does a good job at it. So Martin's does not work with Ventura or Sonoma, which I said earlier. If you want to go there, you have to use OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So OpenCore Legacy Patcher does a hack to the operating system itself to bypass AVX2 instructions. So you're kind of playing with fire there a little bit, if you ask me. And so far, they have not been able to get Big Navi, which is the RX 6600, 6800, 6900, to be able to work beyond Monterey. So even if I wanted to install Sonoma or Ventura, I can't because I have a GPU that is not compatible. AVX2, also known as Haswell New Instructions, expands most integer commands to 256 bits and introduces new instructions. They were first supported by Intel with the Haswell processor, which shipped in 2013. Therefore, the Mac Pro Xeon processor does not have this ability in the chip. And that's where OpenCore Legacy Patcher comes in and it does a workaround to get the systems to load. It patches the system. But you're not going to be able to use software that has AVX2 instructions in it, even if you got the OS to install. And new versions of Final Cut and Logic are just coming out and they're going to be using the AVX2 instructions and you probably will not even be able to launch the program on the Mac Pro 5.1. But don't quote me on that. Maybe they will run. Uh, maybe they'll partially run and you won't be able to use some of the options in it. I'm not sure. And there are also some games on Steam when you're running Windows that require AVX2 and they won't launch on the Xeon processor. And this is why I stick with Martin Lowe's package and Monterey. Plus the fact that I'm using an RX 6800 XT and that also is not supported by OpenCore Legacy Patcher except for in Monterey, but it will not work with Ventura or Sonoma. So my next video will probably be titled The Current State of the Mac Pro 5.1 in 2023. And I actually put a lot of that information in this video, but this has been kind of a rambling video. Sorry for the boring graphics, but hopefully it has some information that you can use. And please subscribe to my channel, give me that thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next Mac Sound Solutions video.